Hey there, you looking kind of cute. Please consider subscribing and check out our Patreon for more. Enjoy the video. I'm Joseph O'Day. About 15 years ago, I started a business. Several companies hire us to do market research consulting for them. My office is small, and only Kay and I work there. The office is in a business center on the edge of Chicago. The building has three floors, and each floor has about 15 offices. The first floor is where my office is. I am the only one who owns the business. I am no longer married and live in a nice apartment close to work. Since I got divorced, I've bought a lot of girly clothes that I wear a lot at home. Over the past year, I've started wearing women's items at work, mostly just under my men's clothes. Camisoles, nylons, underwear, etc. I am very careful all the time. Kay does a great job as a secretary. Her husband, who was a successful stockbroker, left her about five years ago. She helped him with his business, so she knows a lot about how it works. She helps me run my business in more ways than just being my secretary. In the divorce settlement, she hired an amazing woman lawyer and got the house, a large cash settlement, and $2,000 per month in alimony. Her ex pays the mortgage, taxes, and insurance on the house. She works mostly to get money to spend and to keep her business skills current. Kay has known my cross-dressing secret few months now. She thought at first that she saw a line under my pants when I bent down to pick something up, but she thought it was just a silly thought. Even though I thought I was being very careful, she started paying more and more attention and noticing more and more things. She knows that if she just talks to me about it, I will deny it and maybe even fire her. She won't have anything to back up what she says. A lot of her thoughts are about these things. She has thought of a lot of things she could do, from just asking for a raise to crazy ideas that she knows could never come true. About six months ago, the Sunday disaster happened. On a Sunday, I was at the office finishing up a report for a client that had to be done the next day. I knew that no one else was in the building. I realized that if I had thought about it, I could have lived out my dream been there dressed in all women's clothes. A month later, this happened again. So I brought a blouse, skirt, and heels in my attache case. I pretended to be Kay and did my work at her desk while wearing girly clothes. On the Sunday in question, I was very excited to go to work because I would get to play Kay again. I carefully checked every office in the building to make sure they were dark and empty and that my car was the only one in the parking lot. I locked the office door, opened my bag, and put on the sheer, frilly nylon top. Then I put on a dress made of peach satin and a short skirt, together with bright red lipstick, nail polish, and earrings that hung down. I was in heaven. After I finished my work, I sat down at Kay's desk and thought, she'd die if she saw me now. Kay was at home writing Christmas cards when she realized she had left her address book at work. She quickly got in her car and drove the 15 minutes to work. When she saw that my car was there, she went inside, put her key in the office door, and walked in. She stopped in her tracks when she saw me sitting at her desk in my best clothes and makeup. In an instant, she realized that everything she had ever thought about catching me doing girl things had just happened, and it was even better than she had imagined. I was speechless as she walked toward me. Okay, this is so embarrassing. I stuttered. Let me explain. She walked over to where I was sitting and looked at my dress. She stood on top of me and saw my skirt and high heels. She laughed as she said, Well, I see we have a new office, girl. She walked right into my inner office, where my mail jacket, slacks, shirt, and shoes were lying on my desk, grabbed them, and left the office without saying a word. She went to her car on foot and put my things in the trunk. Then she sat in her car, shocked by what had happened, and thought, Oh, God, girl, I knew it. What am I going to do? She laughed so hard when she thought about me being stuck in the office wearing only girls' clothes. Her mind raced through everything she had thought about in the last six months. She told herself, go for it, girl. She walked into the office where I was shaking, not knowing what was going to happen, and yelling at myself for being so stupid. So, Miss Boss, let's look at you closely. She said this with a smirk on her face. I again stuttered, okay, let me explain. I didn't know what else to say. No need to explain, Miss Boss. I've known for six months that you wear girly clothes under your male ones. 
I just never thought you were such a cute girl. She told him to stand up and smile. I was trying to buy time and figure out how to get out of this situation, but all I could think of was to go along with her for now. I might be able to get along with her. I stood there and smiled as she took the first of many embarrassing pictures of me. She took pictures of me typing at her desk, using the copier, fax machine, and filing cabinet, and then using the copy machine. She brought my jacket and pants with her and told me to put them on. We're going shopping now, Miss Boss, she said with a laugh. My car keys and wallet had been taken out of my jacket, so she had to drag me to her car. She drove me to a nearby mall and parked in front of a store that sold clothes for women. She said, let's go, Miss Boss. Okay, I can't go in there in these heels, makeup and earrings, I cried. Miss Boss, it's either that or your customers and friends will see the pictures tonight. They will be on the office building's bulletin board tomorrow. Now you can choose. I followed her into the store while dancing on my heels because I was so upset. The woman who ran the store laughed as she told me I was a girly girl who needed dresses, blouses, and skirts. I tried out a lot of them and she bought them all, telling me that they were going on the company expense account. After that, we went to the makeup section and then to a wig shop where she and two sales girls helped me choose a black shoulder length wig. She drove me to her house and made me take a shower. After I washed, I was taken to the bedroom where my transformation would happen. First, she put a girdle with garters and black nylons around my waist. Then came a slip and a knee-length red silk dress. Then she put me in front of her mirror and began plucking my eyebrows to make them look more feminine. Oh, sure. What do you have in mind? I still couldn't believe what had happened and was still happening, so I cried, I can't go to work like this tomorrow. Oh, you can, and you'll look great, she said. She told me to look at my new self when she was done with my makeup and wig. We're going to dinner now. She drove us to a fancy restaurant and let the valet parker take care of the car. The head waiter said, ladies, a table for two. I could see her smirk as my face turned red with shame. The waiter came up to us and asked, would you ladies like a beverage before dinner? During dinner, Kay said, okay, here's what will happen. I'll say that Joseph O'Day has taken a long medical leave of absence, so I'll be in charge. Last but not least, you are going to be my new office girl. I think a nice girly name for you from now on would be Charlene. I'll run the business, and for a year you'll be my office girl. I'll bring you back after that time. Even though you'll only be making a secretary's salary, this will give you a good income. You'll live at my house as Charlene, so I can keep an eye on you as you change into the girl you've probably always wanted to be. I cried. Okay, when are you going to do this? Starting in the morning of tomorrow, she said with a laugh. We drive to her house, and when we get there, she tells me to put on a nightgown she bought. She shows me how to take off my makeup with cold cream and tells me, this is what you'll do every night from now on, so pay attention. She led me to the guest room and told me to get a good night's sleep with a smile. She came into the bathroom the next morning as I was finishing shaving. I took a shower with the scented soap she gave me. She drove us to the office building, parked the car, and walked me inside. As I danced in my high heels down the hall where I had been the owner for so many years, I was in a lot of trouble. I was told that my first job would be to take the coffee pot to the ladies' room, clean it, fill it with fresh water, and start the morning coffee. I made my way down the hallway. The restrooms for women and men are on opposite sides of the main hallway. When a man came out, I instinctively turned toward the men's room. I turned away to go to the bathroom and saw that his eyes were stuck on me. I asked myself, when will I get to walk through that door that says men again? I cleaned the coffee pot and went back to work, where I saw two other office girls doing the same thing. I made the coffee and brought Kay's cup to her. She told Charlene, get your steno pad and come back here. I found the steno pad and sat down in the chair I had always used next to the executive desk. Across your legs and let your skirt fall down into your lap. I want you to sit like that every time you sit there, and you might as well do it at your desk, too. Now, Miss Charlene, write this down. I'd like you to type me a letter, 
Tell me about all the times you've played dress up, how great you feel in girl clothes, and how you want to wear them all the time like a real girl. Include a list of all the women's clothes you already own, with details about the model, style, material, and color of each item. Tell me what each one makes you feel like. Ask me for permission to help you become the girl you've always known you are. Sign it with your old name, Joseph O'Day, and your new name, Charlene LaMonica. I walked to my new desk and started typing. Dear Miss Catherine Coughlin, I'm writing you this letter to tell you that I'm a girl and always have been. Since I was a little boy and my mom and sisters dressed me up as a girl and showed me how fun it was to wear petticoats and pretty party dresses, I've loved wearing them. I grew to dislike my boring boy clothes and wish I could always be a girl. Since then, I've tried to dress as a girl whenever I can. I really like how silk, satin, lace, and nylon feel. I'm jealous of all women and girls who can wear such beautiful clothes every day. Every time you come into the office, I wish I could wear the clothes you do. I'm grateful that you've given me the chance to work as your office girl and make my dreams come true. I beg you to help me become a real girl and teach me how to live a happy life. I will try my hardest to be a great office girl for you and help you in any way you want. Here is a list of the clothes for women that I now own. I found out later that she was taking notes on a tablet on her desk. She showed them to me after a long time. Of course, it didn't matter by then. They seemed to be saying, oh God, what have I done? I'm shocked by what's happened. It all happened so quickly. I guess I have to go all the way now. I'm curious about what my new coworker is thinking. She's typing and I can hear it. Well, Kay, right now he looks like a girl. But he's still a boy, and as long as that's the case, he'll never stop trying to get out of this situation. I have the pictures, but he might decide that he can handle that and start over somewhere else. If this works the way it needs to, he'll be completely changed into a woman and can be my office girl for as long as I want, which will be a lot longer than a year. I think I'll take her to lunch at that restaurant where he eats with his local clients. My gynecologist's name is Dr. Malloy. I can talk to her about my health without worrying, and I need to go to the doctor anyway. Maybe Charlene can see her too. Oh my, what about my stylist, Audrey? She would love this, and I can send Charlene to her salon. That should make him feel less like a man. At this point, I gave her the letter to look over. Charlene, please come in. I forgot to write a letter. You have to type the news that you're leaving, and I'm taking over the business. If you finish it right away, I'll take you out to lunch. When I got back to my desk, I started writing the letter that would change my life. To all the valued clients of J.O. Day Company, I will be away for a while due to special circumstances. I will be out of work for a while because of health problems. During this time, Miss Coughlin will be in charge of running the business. I won't be able to talk to you directly, but Kay will be able to help you get in touch with me. She will handle all of my communications with her until further notice. You've all worked with Kay before, and I'm sure she'll be able to do the work we've done with and for your companies, at least as well as I have. I hope to see all of you again someday. With best wishes, Joseph O'Day. I gave the letter to Kay. She laughed and said, Special circumstances? I bet they'd laugh if they knew what those are. Now start making the bills. Before I take you to lunch, I have to do some work. Kay starts talking to another girl co-worker. I need to talk to you about something important, Helene. I need you to keep it a secret. Kay tells what has happened and how her boss, Joseph O'Day, is now her office girl, Charlene LaMonica. Way to go, Kay. I have never heard of anything like that. How can I be of service? I want him to completely change genders. I think I know someone who can help you. She is a doctor and a good friend. Janet Ellenwood is her name. In the last 20 years, she has become an expert in hormone therapy for women going through menopause. She has been giving advice to men who are going through the change from male to female for a while now. She enjoys seeing men lose their manliness. I'll call her right now and ask if you can come in right away. Oh, would you look at that? She has a time slot in 30 minutes. Can you go there as soon as possible? I'll tell her everything while you walk away. Only 15 minutes separate us from her office. That's great. I'm already on my way. Kay is now at the office of Dr. Janet. Get in. Helen told me everything about you, and I love it. 
First, let me tell you a little bit about myself and what I do. Years ago, a friend sent a male patient to me because I was an expert in hormone therapy. I didn't want to like him, but when I found out why, I started to understand what led me to where I am now. This man wanted to change his gender. I have to admit that the excitement I felt at the thought of taking away the manliness was probably not professional, but that's what happened. I put him on a program for estrogen. Over time, his body completely changed into a woman's and he started living as a woman all the time. Kay, I've been a part of 27 of these cases, and it still gives me a thrill to see a man turn into someone who is like us. Here's what I think you should do, Kay. You want things to move quickly so you're in luck. It used to take two years for the old female hormone, Premarin, to completely turn a man's body into a woman's. Wyeth Pharmaceutical Company made a new hormone that works faster and gets the job done in only four months. Not only that, but the results are permanent after that time. The male's hormone-making glands, called androgens, shrink and are taken up by the body. There is no way back for him. I have to warn you that this program will make you feel a lot of different emotions. The hormone will change not only his body, but also how he feels. When he's upset, he might start crying for a while. So what do you think? Will it work? He or should I say she was always a woman anyway? Of course she will do it. Let's try it. You come up with a reason to send her here. I'll do a full evaluation and write a prescription. I'll send a messenger to your office with everything you need. The next morning we are back at the office, Charlene just talked to Kay. Well, Kay told me that since I'm a new employee, I have to get a physical exam before I can be covered by the company's health insurance. Before I could object, Kay told me, don't make any silly objections. Dr. Barnes is very familiar with you. I'll take you to her office as soon as she opens in the morning. From her office, you can take a bus back here. Also, Marla Lewis, who will be our new business lawyer, will be here in about half an hour. Just let her in. She's also aware of everything. Don't worry, Charlene. Both of them have a moral obligation to keep the information they have about you private. Marla Lewis came in, smiled at me, and said, Good morning, Charlene. What a pretty dress. She laughed as she went straight into Kay's office. Marla, Kay, I thought about this all night last night, and I've come up with some ideas that we should start right away. First, I've brought you papers to sign that will get rid of the company's current board of directors. As the person with the most shares, you will choose a new board that includes you, me, and someone else. You will be named president and treasurer by the board. I will be named the company's secretary and chief lawyer. I will put Helen Malloy on the board of directors. She is not only my gynecologist, but also my friend. I'll tell you what happened yesterday at her office over lunch. I'll only pay Charlene the salary I got. She'll be a grown woman and have to live on the salary I give her. She will depend on me for everything. It's great. Okay, so that's settled. Here are the forms she needs to change her name legally. I'll send them to the office of the Secretary of State in Springfield, and that will be the end of Joseph O'Day for good. Before I leave, have her sign them. After all, she's going to need a license to drive at some point. You can't always drive her around. Also, here is a bill of sale that shows the company now owns her car. After she gets her new driver's license, you can let her use it whenever you want. You might want to sell it and buy her a new car, maybe a cute little pink one that fits her status. Charlene, come in here. I need you to sign some papers. Sign here and use your old name for men. Don't bother reading them. A girl working in an office wouldn't understand them. Charlene is taken to the doctor's office the next morning. The story of her exam and the bus ride back to Kay's office could be a whole chapter in a book that is starting to take shape. Kay tells Charlene that the results of her medical exam showed that she was missing some vitamins and minerals and that Dr. Janet has given her a supplement that she needs to take every day for a few months. After that, she will be eligible for the company's health insurance. Kay gives Charlene a bottle with all the pills she needs to finish her change. Charlene says, I've never seen vitamin pills that are pink before. In just two weeks, Charlene's body hair growth has slowed down a lot, and she only needs to shave every other day. She tells Kay this, and Kay laughs and says that it must be because she thinks of herself as a real girl and that's affecting her body. Charlene starts to feel strange things in her body. Her chest is tingling. 
Kay has already told Charlene that Dr. Janet usually gives the vitamin supplements to women who need estrogen replacement, and that they contain a certain amount of female hormones that are making her body change. Kay tells Charlene that this is just a side effect, and she will have to deal with it. She laughs and says, It's making you a much nicer girl anyway. Kay works hard to grow the business and help it do even better. She brings in more customers by selling women's clothes, cosmetics, beauty products, and feminine hygiene products. She becomes so successful that she tells Charlene that she has hired a man to help her with office work. His name is Ken. Charlene will also work for him, of course. Charlene has to wear blouses and dresses, and she knows that Ken looks at her and likes her. Charlene's hips and body have all become very feminine. She is losing all sense of being a man, which is exactly what Kay wanted to happen. At the end of the year, Charlene has turned into a woman completely and for good. She has been told for a few months that she will always be a woman. Charlene is going to secretarial school so she can learn shorthand and get better at typing. She is now a steno taking minutes at a meeting of the board of directors. The board is made up of Kay, Marla, and Dr. Janet, who are all there. Charlene, I've told you everything you need to know about your position. You are a very pretty girl, and you always will be. Kay and I have seen you grow and change into the person you were always meant to be. We want you to have a happy, full life, and we know that what we've done is in your best interest. Do you get what I'm saying? Still shocked by what just happened to her expected income a few minutes ago, Charlene answers softly, Yes, doctor, I understand. Dr. Janet keeps talking in a voice that is soothing and kind. We need to talk about one last step to get you to where you want to be. What could that be? Asks Charlene. During our talks at your checkups, you told me that there is a little bit of your old maleness that makes you stressed. I'm suggesting that you think about surgery as a way to deal with your stress. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out Patreon for a lot more content and early access to YouTube videos.